Up is out of fuel. He's really struggling to get this thing home. Austin is going to throw everything he's got at it, but he's got to be a bit careful. He can't throw it in the weeds. He was just told, use it down the hill. We've got to be able to conserve the fuel down the hill so he can get out of the chase on full speed. Look at this. This is a battle for Australia's biggest race. Winkup is conserving fuel. Mostert is totally fine. The Bathurst 1000 victory, oh! and Mostert tries to go around the outside at McPhillamy. There's no space there. He tries to do it at Skyline. There's no space there either. Now he's just got a hold station because it's a one-line groove down through the dipper and on the run towards the elbow. This is off the scale. Off the scale as Wincup does everything he can. He had a three-second margin. He blocks down the inside because he can. He comes away. And another way. And Mostert goes through on the inside. This is huge in Australian motorsport. They've gone berserk at Ford Performance Racing. This kid is going to win this thing today, and so is Paul Morris. Has not led a lap all day, Cropper. Not led a lap. Chas Mostert is going to win with Paul Morris. Extraordinary motor race. Something you, you have never seen before. We are approaching the eighth hour of the 2014 Super Cheap Auto Bathurst 1000. And Chas Mostert, who's had 21 V8 supercar events and 56 previous races, is going to make a very special name in history here. He is the winner of the Super Cheap Auto Bathurst 1000. Moffat second. Second for James Moffat. And Nick Perkett makes it onto the podium. I'm out of breath. It's an unbelievable outcome. Davison fourth, then Wincup, then Winterbottom. Runs it over the top of the hill for the last time for Shane Van Gisbergen. Three kilometres remaining. That's all that separates him from the greatest prize in Australian motorsport. Shane Van Gisbergen has got control of this motor race. He's put together a beautiful drive today. Cam orders in second place. What a performance. Lines it up through Forest Elbow. Remember the start of the weekend. That's where it all went sideways for him with Tim Slade early in the day. But now the last sequence of gear changes. And stop and consider this, Mark. He was the runner-up here in 2016. He missed out by one-tenth of a second. He was the runner-up here last year. He missed out by seven-tenths of a second. But more telling was in 2014. He had this thing by the throat and it got away from him. He should have won on that occasion, but he's going to do it today. He makes the run down to the final corner and Shane Van Gisbergen is about to put his foot on the brake for the very last time and line it up to the chequered flag. The 31-year-old Kiwi is the master at Bathurst and Shane Van Gisbergen takes victory at Mount Panorama. lead at the front is 1.6 seconds over Jason Richards. It's a Holden battle between the top four, Jamie Winker, the leading Ford in fifth. Richards has actually closed the margin on Tanda, 1.4 seconds, but it's probably too little too late. And Holdsworth has eased the gap ever so slightly. What a recovery from last year for Tanda and Will Davison. That's why this man is not only a former Bathurst champion, but a former series champion, Garth Tander. He is so cool under pressure, so fast, unbelievably professional. It's been all out attack for Greg Murphy. We've loved every second of it. It's gonna go down to the final corner for him, trying to get a podium spot for car 51 and for his teammate Mark Scape, but this one He's on him. is going to belong to Garth Tander and Will Davison. He's on him. Round at the chase. And now Lee has to be defensive. It'll be on at the last corner here. Tander's going to win it, but how can you take your eyes from this? We thought that this would be the day when Lowndes and Wincup would stand again, but history is going to have to wait because Holden has hit back at the mountain. There you are, the Bathurst champion. Will Davison are the 2000 and main champions. Well done, mate. You know you've got to go in through the gate. Fantastic job, mate. Oh, he's thrown it in there. Van Gisbergen's arrived at warp speed into there. 
They're driving the wheels off them, but the cars are not ready for it. Those tyres will have oh! lost some temp. They've oh. lost some pressure. They'll be a handful to drive. They climb out of the cutting for the last time. It's second to third gear over the top of the hill for the blind approach. And this is where we've seen trouble today. There's rubbish on the road everywhere. The fans have gone crazy at the top of the hill. What an off-the-scale car race. McLaughlin still leading with half a lap to go. McLaughlin over oh, Van Gisbergen. Oh, he just about threw the thing away like a speedway car over the top. Van Gisbergen is barely clutching this thing. Minimise the risk here now. This is Van Gisbergen's spot, but he's too far back. Just get it stopped. Get it stopped. Pull it up and make the apex and you're home free. Come out of here without a mistake and you're there. He's almost done it. He's on to Conrad straight for the last time. McLaughlin is in good shape, but now he cannot afford a mistake at the bottom, and we've seen them today. He's got the metres in hand. The Icon Quick Chopper gives us the perfect view. He thinks about where he's going to break. What's he got left in store as he gets to the most critical corner in the country? Off the back of the fastest corner in the country. What a year for Team Penske. An Indy 500 win for Simon Pagano. An IndyCar Championship for Newgarden. Roger Penske's here to add something very big. Another milestone. 26-year-old Kiwi, Scott McLaughlin, wins the Super Team Auto Bathurst 1000 of 2019. this. The lights are ablaze for Greg Murphy. He's all over the back of Stephen Johnson at the top of the hill. Two thirds of a lap to run for these guys. Lowndes has kicked clear. Then James Courtney, then Stephen Johnson and Greg Murphy trying to hold up the whole flag. They came here 12 months ago. Craig Lowndes had tears in his eyes. A lot of emotion in this car and around this track. They return in 2007 with a brand new Team Vodafone Falcon. Their strategy has oh, paid dividends. He goes a oh, little wide and for his elbow. That was a massive understeer moment for Lowndes, followed by the corresponding slide in the rear as he gathered it back up. They're just Mark Dutton really trying to calm things down, saying, come on, mate. Here's your margin, no need to push it. A few corners to run now for Craig Lowndes. It looks like he might be able to do it again. What a finish. Through the chase he goes. Courtney still holding on to second. Johnson still holding on to third. They won it at Sandown. And in 2007, Craig Lowndes and Jamie Winkup. They have done the double. Second, Johnson third, Greg Murphy in fourth. You can tell where he's going to make the move. He will try and get Lowndes under brakes into the chase, but he's not close enough. Massive cheer from the crowd on top of the mountain. It's Lowndes. Great drives from both these fellas. They have driven the wheels off both their cars. They have not put a foot wrong. There is a young Victorian back in the better electrical garage by the name of Jamie Wincup, who is about to become a first time Bathurst winner. For Lowndes, it'll be number two. And Kelly makes a valiant effort. But he won't have it. It won't be enough. This weekend has been all about farewelling the great man, Peter Brock, the friend and mentor to Craig Lowndes. This will be a huge outpouring of emotion. Ten years in the waiting. Lowndes and Wincup do it. That is an incredible moment. Fantastic race. job, mate. Unbelievable. And Campbell Little is in tears. You can imagine. And Wincup fist pumping on the wall. Lowndes has done it on the day he farewelled his friend. We're so close to home. Frosty still got this one. 6,213 metres of racetrack to run. He ran it in too deep. He made
made a mistake. He ran in too deep to that corner into Hell Corner. He did not get off there well enough. Wind Cup will have a look up the inside at turn two. Frosty's going to cover it, and he does. There he goes. He moves right and further right and right again. He's on the white line. He's going to grab a spot here. They're side by side. Hold your breath, Australia. Oh! Frosty has had the big fight here and he went punch for punch and he's forced Wind Cup into a position where he's had the big slide at the moment. He's lost momentum. Dumbrell is gutted. He's gutted. That's the move. That's done it. That was the race winning edge for Winterbottom. Fight and fight and fight till there's no fight left. Wow. That was as brave and as wild as we've ever seen in this sport. It was a hell of a move from Wind Cup to try oh, and go up the outside there. And if he got it done, he was on the inside for the next corner. The reason he did it is he knew if he made the move, he was on the inside for the next corner. Applaud this because this is fantastic motor racing from both these teams, from both these guys. They are at the peak of their powers. What a moment. Ford Performance Racing have had their troubles this season. Mark Winterbottom has had to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Jamie Winkup, who's been the standout driver of the last few years in this game. And Frosty has been waiting so long. After more than a decade of trying, Mark Winterbottom will win the Super Cheap Auto Bathurst 1000 with Stegger Richards. Oh, yeah. supercar driver for a, any Australian in motorsport. Davey looks up the inside at two. They're both completely grip limited. There's nothing left from either men here. Three quarters of a lap remaining and now they do the mountain for the very last time. Six hours and 15 minutes of racing. Absolutely nothing left in the tank for Jamie Winker. He will cough and splutter his way across the line if he has to. David Reynolds going for his first ever V8 supercar win. Round 
him up and lead the race for the first time when it matters on the deck. Garth is struggling for grip with that car, but he's still got him covered. I, I don't know whether he's got enough. It's just amazing. It's almost impossible to read. He does everything that he can to cover. This is for the biggest prize in Australian motor racing. Tanned by two car links at the moment over Lowndes. Lowndes has a look. Remember the brave move a couple of laps ago. He has a big crack under brakes. Tander holds on. One more opportunity for Craig Lowndes to have a crack. It's been more than 30 years since a rookie claimed victory at Mount Panorama in a legendary finish. This is the year of the rookie and the pro. They're trying to save fuel, and there's two thirds of a lap remaining at Mount Panorama. They're trying to save fuel. There's Rihanna Crean, Will's fiance. She'd be as stressed as Will at the moment, and the way into the cutting, that's the spot that I thought he may have been a dive. He can't get that one done. So now Will's got to get across the top of the hill. There's nothing in fuel consumption across here. You've got to go as hard as you can possibly go. Listen to the crowd at the top. Half a lap remaining. The 2016 Super Cheap Auto Fabulous 1000 has been another great race. Will Davison leads by a car length over the top of the mountain. Van Gisbergen is absolutely ragging it off the top of the hill. He'll try and pull the move at Forest Selvo, but the yellow flags will balk him at the bottom of the hill. He looks for the big wide turn in to turn down time. So now there can be no passing at the bottom of the chase. Will Davidson's working hard for this one. Can he do it? His grandfather won the Australian Grand Prix here back in 1958. This would be very, very special. Van Gisbergen's got seven points in hand in the championship. They cannot pass down here because of the yellow flags. We've got one break zone remaining. Here comes Van Gisbergen. There's nothing in it. They've been racing for six hours and 19 minutes. He's got a block. Here comes Gizzy. There's nothing in it. Will Davison might get this done. He's done it. Will Davison is going to win.